What's up guys, I'm bringing you a beginner's guide to running an electrical system in your guys' converted bus or your converted van. I'm gonna be basically going through all of the components that it takes to run a successful solar kit. That has to do with the solar charger, the batteries, the panels, and all of that that comes in between, as well as the fuses, the wiring, and wiring size. You can also find tons of resources in the description box below, including articles that help you understand things, links to all of the products that are in this video, and a 10% off code uh, from Renogy because they have been so awesome to us. I just recently pretty much finished the whole system except for, you know, a couple lights that they need to install. So everything in terms of electrical are gonna be underneath this couch right here. That's the main thing is trying to find just enough space, to put everything, because it actually takes up a lot more space than you would intend. I'm gonna open this up for you guys, give you a look at the electrical system that I have. It's not the prettiest. I know a lot of people are really good at cable management. I am not, so if there's one thing you don't take from this video, it's cable management. <laughs> Uh, the main thing is batteries. These are 12 volt batteries. They're 200 amp hours. Basically just how much it can shell out in a span of time. This says 200 amp hours by 10 hours. You need a big battery system because if batteries keep running low, it's gonna damage the battery. You need a battery storage system that is big enough for the amount of electrical components that you're gonna have running off of it. The next big thing about batteries is that you need to know the type of battery because some are sealed, some are not which means some actually off gas and then some don't. Right here, I have a sealed gel battery, which means it doesn't off gas. They're deep cycle. They're able to go a little bit lower in terms of expelling 40% or 50 or 60% of the power that's actually in this battery without actually damaging it. Most people that do conversions, they go for deep cycle batteries and then sometimes they go for either lithium or gel batteries, but we decided to go for gel batteries. We decided to use 800 watts of solar. We have eight 100 watt panels. This is where it kind of got a little tricky. I just knew that most people wired them in series. So I kind of just went along with that, which ended up being a little bit of a problem, which I'll explain a little bit later. And it's running through these wires right here. This is positive and negative of the solar panels. I basically just drilled a hole up there. I believe these are 10 gauge wire, which is the standard that it comes with from Renogy. This is the solar charger. The solar charger takes the power from the solar panels, basically harnesses it and turns it into power that's consumable for the batteries. So that's the positive and negative right there. It says it's charging right now. I'm getting 55 volts. My batteries are at 100%. So the power coming from the solar panels is going into here. And then from here, it's going to the batteries. We have the cables from the solar charger right here, positive and negative, going around down here to the bus bars, positive and negative bus bars which are also connected to these batteries. These batteries right here are ran in parallel. The differences in wiring it is basically how you connect it. This is parallel right here. So this is negative battery to negative to negative. Positive, positive, positive. If I ran this in series, it would be positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative, and then so on and so forth. The way you wire it changes, A, how many amps, that's going through the wiring and how many volts. So I wanted to quickly explain a little bit more in depth on what series and parallel is. I drew a diagram. The differences between series and parallel is that in series, you add the voltage. In parallel, you add the amperage. So for example, the batteries that I have, those were wired in parallel, which means that the amperage is being added each time a new battery is connected. This example on the screen shows 12 volt batteries that output five amps. As you can see in the diagram, each positive is connected to each positive and so on and so forth. So the total comes out to 15 amps and 12 volts versus if I was to wire those, and this can go for solar solar panels or for um, the batteries, because the solar panels I have up there are actually five amps and 12 volts. If I was to wire the batteries or the panels in series, it would add the voltage. It comes out to 36 volts and five amps. The two differences is that the way that it's wired and what it adds. That's the problem that I ran into when I was wiring the solar panels is because I wired everything in series, but then I realized that my charge controller can only uh, input or take in, I think it was actually 150 volts. You have to take the open circuit voltage, uh, which is actually 22 volts. It would have came out to 176 volts would have blown my charge controller. I had to reduce that number. So what I ended up doing is running my panels in series and parallel. I have eight panels up there. I took four in series and four in series 
and then I took those two groups of four and added them together in parallel. So taking the 22 volts open circuit into consideration, each panel was 22 volts times it by four and you get 88. So each group was 88, adding them in parallel, kept it at 88 volts, but then all it did was took the five amps from each one and added it together. So the output ended up being 88 volts and 10 amps. You can find generally all of the numbers that you need on the website that you purchase the panels or batteries. Now back to the rest of the video. That was one thing that I had to find out the hard way because I had to rewire everything on the ceiling. If you guys don't know the difference between amperes, wattage, and voltage, I'm gonna link a article in the description box below. The numbers are what dictates how big your wire is, how big your fuses are. The next components that you need are bus bars or terminals. These give you a way to connect all of the wires together. These have four terminals because that's really all I needed. They're basically just bolts and nuts that act like terminals for the different wires. See, so I have the negative from the battery going here. I have the negative from the solar charger going here. This is actually a negative for the distribution block for 12 volts right here. Negative for the inverter and then negative to ground. The positive bus bar does the same thing. So I have a positive from the batteries, positive from the solar charger, positive to a shutoff switch, to the inverter and whatnot, and the 12 volt distribution block as well. This is gonna be our inverter. This inverter's 2000 watts and it's a charger as well. So the wire you see right here is an input for 120 volts from shore power. So shore power is just basically the plug that's outside that can charge our batteries just by plugging into the bus. Then this output right here is what sends power out as 120 volts rather than 12 volts. So this is giving us 120 volt power and then this guy right here is giving us 12 volt power. This shut off generally turns off 12 volts as well as when I turn this off, but this is powering 12 volts off. Also. So it gives me the opportunity for this to possibly charge that as well as this to power it. Then the next thing that you need is a distribution block or distribution box. This is 12 volts. It's really easy. It basically just has tons of terminals for positive, tons of terminals for negative, and then different fuses up to 20 amps, I believe in here. The wiring for 12 volt is really easy. It's literally just positive and negative. And you have to run that to each light charger, anything that you want 12 volt power to, you have to run these wires. One thing I figured out doing this system is that 120 volt wiring is a little bit different than 12 volt wiring. Don't ask me why, I'm not exactly sure. 12 volts requires just positive and negative. 120 volts requires hot, neutral, and ground. So that's why you see three wires running from this one, then you see two wires running from this guy. So now I'm gonna kinda go through all the wiring that I used. I think I kinda overdid it a little bit just because I didn't know the exact numbers, but I had a lot of help from people on online and then just followed a guide which is in the description box below. All this big wire is two watt wiring. This is a 300 amp fuse from the batteries to the bus bar um, and then I have fuses running from every positive from the bus bars. Wires running from the solar charger are two gauge and those are going to the positive and negative. Also I have more two watt wire going to the switch going through to a second bus bar that distributes off into the inverter and then the 12 volt distribution block. This is also 2 watt cable going to the inverter with a 250 amp fuse. This is a 6 gauge wire right here going to 100 amp fuse and then to the distribution block. And then all the negatives, these big wires are 2 watt. And this is going to the inverter to the ground and this is 2 gauge. This is 10 gauge right here going to the shore power and then I actually have 3 6 gauge wires. Green is ground, hot is red, and then white is neutral. And then I have 6 gauge going all the way across going through here to a plug that I wired up, which might not be the best way to do this, but this is the wire that I plugged to 120. This has actually a 20 amp fuse on it. That's what's powering our outlet over there and also it's powering um, this bad boy right here. So pretty much every component in my system uh, is from Renogy as well as all of the solar panels are Renogy also. So if you guys are interested in purchasing anything from Renogy, we have a link in the description box below. You guys can get 10% off if you use our code and also it helps us out if you do that. So that's pretty much all of the components and wiring and fuses and all that stuff um, that's involved in my system. If you guys have any constructive criticism, comment it down below as well as um, if you have any 
any other questions about the system, comment it down below. Again, I'm gonna leave everything in the description box below where you guys can get the components, the websites that helped me, the articles that helped me understand everything. So go check out the description box below and I really hope this video helped you guys. I suck at tutorials, so.